Hey everybody, it's me, Kia, once again, coming to bring you more Rainbow Me approved books for children. As you may know, November is Native American Heritage Month. So what better way to kick it off than to review some books featuring Native American main characters for kids. So first off, we have Grandmother's Dreamcatcher. Grandmother's Dreamcatcher says, while Kimmy's parents look for a house close to daddy's job, Kimmy stays with her Chippewa grandmother. The bad dreams she has had still bother her, but with her grandmother's help, she learns about dream catchers. So as you may or may not know, dream catchers are these, these beautiful ornate um, ornaments that are been created, they go beside the bed, and the purpose is to catch the bad dreams, so to keep people from having nightmares. Oh man, it's really, really cool. Maybe a cool um, art project to try to create one uh, with the family. That'd be really awesome. So some of the reviews says, this is a wonderful book, perfect child-friendly illustrations, clear and interesting text, it arrived just in time to save my three-year-old from some nasty stereotyping she was absorbing from somewhere, probably preschool, as I screen media pretty thoroughly for this sort of thing. Hey, this is a Rainbow Me customer in the making if she's not already. <laughs> uh, it was great to be able to show modern Native Americans with recognizable traditions and normal lives within an interesting story. So very cool, someone who's very interested in what their child sees. Cultural diversity is key. <laughs> All right, next, next up we have Death of the Iron Horse. Death of the Iron Horse is a historical story about the Cheyenne people. And it says the Iron Horse was coming, thundering and panting and breathing black smoke. It was a fearsome thing. The Cheyenne people had never seen a steam locomotive before, and it terrified them. Would it come over the hill into their camp, just as the relentless soldiers and white settlers had done before? Powerful words and pictures tell the true story of August 7th, 1867, the only time an iron horse was derailed by Native Americans. It is a tale of courage and pride and of a people caught up in an unequal struggle to preserve their sacred way of life. This is from a historical perspective and it shows Native American heroism. I love it. Our next book is Thunder Boy Jr. Thunder Boy Jr. is named after his dad, but he wants a name that's all his own. Just because people call his dad Big Thunder doesn't mean he wants to be Little Thunder. He wants a name that celebrates something cool he's done, like touch the clouds, not afraid of 10,000 teeth, or full of wonder. But just when Thunder Boy Jr. thinks all hope is lost, he and his dad pick the perfect name, a name that is sure to light up the sky. So apparently this is a National Book Award winner uh, the author is Sherman Alexie, and it says National Book Award winner Sherman Alexie's lyrical text and Caldecott honor winner Yuyi Morales' striking and beautiful illustrations celebrate the special relationship between father and son. One of the reviews says Thunder Boy Jr. is named after his father who is known as Big Thunder, but Thunder Boy wants a more normal name like Sam which is what his mother wanted to name him. People call him Little Thunder, which sounds like a burp or a fart. <laughs> Thunder Boy hates his name and wants one that is all his own. He thinks of other names that would be more cool and would speak to what he has done in life. He doesn't know how to tell his father that he wants a different name, but his father may understand a lot more than Thunder Boy thinks. It says, amazing, amazing, amazing. Alexi proves here that he can write for children with a voice that is clear and resonant. He writes almost like a poem. A powerful and beautiful picture book that respects modern American Indian culture, Native American Indian culture, and families. This book belongs in every library, and this book is apparently for ages three to five. 
So the naming rituals in and across Native American tribes are so unique and so beautiful and how names are chosen. So maybe that's another activity you can do in trying to figure out what your chosen name would be. Is, is, will it be named after a river? Would it be named after the way the water flows? Would it be named after a certain personality that you have? I wonder what my name would be. I have to think about that. <laughs> that's all that I have for you today. And as always, for more videos, movies, and of course books that feature culturally diverse main characters. Check us out at www.rainbowmekids.com.